we're going to start today's tutorial talking about brushes. Now brushes can be found to any non-block, non-tool, or non-placeable item. By binding the sphere brush to this feather, I am able to create spheres of my chosen size and material at any length. This is useful for creating mountainous or hilly terrain. The next brush is the cylinder brush. By binding the cylinder brush to this string, I am able to create cylinders of varying sizes and a material depending on how I set it. The next brush I'm going to talk about is the smooth brush. The smooth brush is very useful and is one of my favorites as it allows you to create natural terrain. Next we're going to talk about changing the settings of your brushes. Once you equip a brush, you are able to change all of its settings. But to change its size, you need to type in backslash size and the new size you wish to use. To change the material used, you just need to type in backslash mat and the new material you would like to use. Now you can also use the item's ID number and I will provide a link to the graphic you see on the right side. Next we're going to talk about the mask tool. Now the mask tool is very important, especially when working next to bedrock with sand. It allows you to tell the brush exactly which blocks it can replace. In this instance, I tell it to only replace air blocks. To clear your mask, simply type in mask. Next we're going to talk about the tools. For pinpoint accuracy, I use the super pickaxe. To activate it, all you need to do is type in two backslashes. This allows you to break any block instantly with a pickaxe. This way you have more control over which blocks you break, whereas in creative mode, if you even touch a block, it will break. The wand tool, which is bound to the wooden axe, allows you to create a selection area between two points with the left and right clicks. We will revisit the wand tool later. Next up is the tree tool. Now the tree tool is much like the brush tools that we used earlier, as it needs to be bound to a non-block, non-placeable, non-tool item. Once bound, the tree tool will allow you to place tool trees as if grown naturally with pinpoint accuracy. You have many choices of tree types. I show four in the clip and also the full list in the upper right corner. I will also be linking you to the wiki where I acquired that list in the first place. You can find that link down in the description. Next we're going to be talking about the commands. Both those used with the wand tool as well as those I use standalone for my terraforming. First we're going to talk about the set command. By selecting an area between two points with my wand, I am able to then use the set command to fill the area between those two points with any material I choose. Now you can use either the material's name or the numbers. The replace tool is very helpful as it allows us to create a selection and then replace all non-air blocks within that selection with another block. Alternatively, we can input two different block types, replacing one with the other. When making mistakes while editing, we use the undo tool. We can type in just undo to undo the last edit we made, or we can type in a number after undo to retrace our steps back as far as we need. This works with all brushes, tools, and commands. If you go back too far, use the redo command. The overlay tool is very useful for blanketing areas with a chosen block. For instance, if you were creating a mountain and you wanted to put dirt on top of the stone, it will always it will place its your chosen block on the highest possible block within your selection area. The snow tool allows us to simulate snowfall in a radius around our player. The command will also freeze water within the radius. 
The Stow Command can also be a very powerful overlaying tool when overlaying multiple layers near a water source, whereas the overlay tool will create multiple layers over the water the snow tool will only freeze it, which then can be later thawed. I find this very useful in most circumstances and use it much more than the overlay tool. The fill command can be very useful. It allows you to fill an area with another block at the height that you are standing in a radius around yourself. I mostly use this tool to fill pools of water and lava. The drain tool is also very useful as it can drain liquids in a radius around you. The fix water and fix lava commands allow us to turn any active water or lava within a radius around ourselves into source blocks. Well that about covers the tools, and brushes, and commands that I use regularly for my terraforming. I hope you guys found this information useful and I will try to take more time in the future to record another video with some of the techniques I use. And don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out guys. Thanks for watching.